Okay, now after doing a sequence alignment, we're going to do a structural alignment using uh, the same proteins as we looked at before, the rat cytochrome B5 and the Ascaris cytochrome B5. And we can access the structures from the same sites that we got the um, sequences from because those databases are linked. So we go down to the Uniprot KB database We'll call up the rat cytochrome B5 sequence first, just as before. Now we scroll all the way down, and we're looking for the three day structure databases. So there's multiple structures that are available, so we may as well just choose the top one. This will give us a link directly to the protein database, and this gives us the uh, PDB accession number. So we click on that, and we've been here now before, so you know how to download the files. And we go back now and we get the Ascaris sequence. We just back up on the browser. And then we do the same thing for the Ascaris site. Scroll down. This has been sequenced as well too. There's only one structure for this one, so we don't really have much of a choice. But the resolution you note is pretty good. So click on that, download this file, and then we close the browser. And you go to wherever your files get downloaded, and just to keep things straight, we'll just rename the files. And you place them wherever it's convenient. And we'll open up the Ascaris structure first because it shows something interesting that occasionally you have to do. I mention this in lectures sometimes when you go to the protein database sometimes what happens is that they load multiple structures. If there's more than one structure in the unit cell, sometimes you get two copies of the structure. This will become more clear when we change the view of the uh, protein to the preset uh, publication type. Now you see we actually have two protein chains. For the purposes of the alignment, we only need one. And having two here just clutters them up. So what we can do is we can actually selectively remove one of them. We go down to the bottom right, change what we're selecting, and we change it to select chains, click on one of the chains, select it, and then under the action button just drag down to where it says remove atoms. Now all we have left is one copy of that protein, so we just go to the action button again, click on center, and that center set. Now essentially what we're going to be doing is displaying within this window both the Ascaris and the rat cytochrome B5, and we want a way to distinguish them, so we just change the color of this one so we know what it is. And so for the Ascaris, uh, we'll just choose it to be yellow. Now, from within the browser, or sorry, from within the, uh, the Mac or the PyMO program, we open up the rat structure. change its view, and change its color to something else. Now if you want to compare the structures, you select either one of them, but use the action button, click, drag down to align, then just move across, and if there's only one choice to align it to, it will align it to that. So we've selected the rat cytochrome B5 and our choice is to align to the Ascaris cytochrome B5. So we go across to here, click, and the only thing we have to do now is to center it. So we go to All, Action, Center, and there you have it. Now we've got the two structures aligned. Now keep in mind that their sequence identity was actually quite low. 
It was actually below the threshold where people normally feel confident to say that two proteins, two proteins are related or not, which is usually about 25 to 30 percent. And the sequence identity of these proteins was only about 17 percent. But you can see here from the way that their secondary structure elements and the way that the proteins fold, the topology, and even the way that they bind heme is actually very, very similar. So this just shows a case in point that occasionally, and certainly the case here, that uh, three-dimensional fold is af actually often at times conserved more than the actual sequence is. Again, though, if you look at the pattern of the residues, you would find that there would be, say, hydrophobic residues in the same positions, and they might be different, but uh, they would occupy the same positions and have very similar functions to each other. So that's the end of uh, this particular tutorial. And the next one we'll do is what do you do when you've got, say, a structure of one protein and you've got a sequence in another one that you know is similar but no structure for that. There's a program called Swiss Homology that allows us to make a model structure based upon the known structure of the protein uh, that we would like to get the structure for just based upon its sequence. But we'll leave that for uh, a little bit later.